we should be getting it into this third game now. And the third map is going to be on Tal Taldrim, so... Yep. Looking good, folks. Looking good. I'm going to have to ask Mr. D. Apollo to do the intro for this one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I desperately have to blow my nose, so I will turn the mic off. You will not have to endure that. So <laughs> off you go, Apollo. You can cover. And welcome to the third game of this loser bracket semi-final. On Taldrim, we do have Mouse has your spawning on the left location on this map, and we do have Delphi down here in the bottom right. And uh, hopefully this, this is all sorted out for both players and that they don't have issues. Uh, and well, Hasjobs doesn't have that many issues at all. It's just kind of Delphi. Uh, it was actually even playing uh, you know, music in the background uh, just to try and get rid of uh, any sounds outside of game. Uh, and that's not really what you want to do. Maybe he's, he's comfortable with listening to music, but personally, I, I mean, I couldn't do that. Uh, so I feel a little bit sorry for him that that's in fact what he has to do. Uh, but nevertheless, we have started. Both players agreed to start, so it must be okay, and he must be feeling okay, especially after that second display. He was uh, playing very well in that second game. Yeah, he can do it. That's the main thing. He can do it. He is completely capable of beating Hazelwops. He just has to focus and see exactly what happens. And we'll find out exactly what's going to be going on in this particular game. Hazelwops will look to try and perhaps deal an early death blow to his opponent because I think he's seen how monstrous Delphi can really get. Yeah, indeed. And this is uh, kind of interesting. We are seeing both players play out their style. And uh, we have to see how it's going to work out. Both players, final game. Whoever loses this is going to be very, uh, very sad because they're going to be out of the tournament. And we do have Hasjob scouting to this location straight away. Uh, and I don't think that Dolphy's going to be too happy about this because Hazelwobs is scouting in the right direction. Well, Hazelwobs is probably very wary considering the last particular encounter that he had with him. We do see that coming out right here. And Hazelwobs is about to find out the action that's going on. He uh, There you go. He spotted the spawning pool. And he must be aware of what's coming in now. There we go. Six Zerglings already on the field looking for eight. I believe that was a ten pool, actually, or possibly a nine pool from... Delphi, and this is an extremely aggressive style, although I have to wonder if that's actually going to work. Simon X Core coming down, Zealot being boosted out already, Delphi's going to throw himself against the wall right here again. Yeah, and well, this is just smart play by Hasrobs, not going for the forge uh, and another gateway add-on, he's just going to wait until the Zealot is out and will block the choke like normal, uh, and yeah, this build is basically used um, to do a little bit of aggression against any greedy players on this map, unfortunately for um, Delphi, that's not going to work, and he has to Chrono Boost this out. This actually could be kind of close because I don't think that the, after this gate, uh, the Zealot, the gateway could even go down. Yeah, uh, it's looking so it very, very likely very right close. now, actually, and it's not making the same mistake they did last time. Put it, applying some pressure, getting as much as he can. Gateway shields are going down right now, and Delphi needs to bring this down immediately. He needs to take it up, but he can't do it by the looks of it. He's just running backwards and forwards, not really doing much damage. He needs to get in there and actually stick the boot in and uh, try and get the surround. He tries to get in there. He can't do it right now. Good micromanagement there by Hazelwobs. The shield's still down on the gateway. He's not able to break the line, however. Thing is, a 10 pool is much less risky than a 7. He can easily transition out of that. Oh, well, we can see that now. 15 drones for 16 probes, and even the, uh, the second base has been put down here uh, by Delphi. So it's not too bad at all, to be honest, from him. And he has a good economy getting the extract drop now. Just putting a little bit of pressure, forcing Hazyobs to get a lot of zealots and a sentry out. We'll have to see how Hazyobs transitions from this. I feel that he'll just play completely standard. Okay, as you can see, the second assimilator will go up. Uh, and he'll probably be most likely looking for a three base expo or something like this. Mm, and now Delphi bringing in a few reinforcements. I have to wonder if he'll try still to maybe grab a surround. In the meantime, Delphi managing to sneak an overlord in there. So that'll prove to be very useful for him. He'll get some valuable scouting information and he'll find out exactly what Heizu Obs is doing, which we can clearly see on the stream right now. Well, have a look at what Delphi's doing. It's look, still looking all right for him, actually. His economy is looking pretty strong. Once again, looks for the charge. He gets the surround. However, he doesn't have the damage for it. Brings in a third zealot. He's going to have to pull away from that. It's a shame he hasn't been able to take that gateway down. Uh, he's been dancing backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Overlord taking a lot of fire from the ground. However, he will see those two gateways, and he's aware of what's coming on. And economically, I'm, I'm still liking what Delphi's doing right now. Yeah, it's a very nice open. Uh, I actually started using this build after speaking with TLO. This is something TLO used to do uh, on large maps like this, go for the nine pool uh, and actually just get, <coughs> excuse me, six links out or so uh, and then just completely transfer 
uh, into a normal build. As you can see, the unit counting station, 32 drones to 23. So we can already see quite a large uh, deficit of this, and the Nexus has been put down now. Mm. Uh, and he does have enough sentries out now to defend against any link counterattack and so on. I would certainly think so. However, I'd imagine Delphi will try and expand under this one again as soon as he scouts this one. He'll look and see if there's any way he can expand. There is, you know, he, there's plenty of options for him. He should be able to deal with that without a problem. Hallucination on the way up for Hazelobs right now. And, you know, I don't think Delphi's going to be fooled by that. You know, some players are. Some players are. But in this case, I don't think that's going to happen. But what he will use it for, of course, is to get some scouting information. And he will. He hasn't actually seen the Nexus yet. I think he can presume what's going on. Still power droning, not really uh, doing anything in, in defense of any aggression. And the Roach Warren has been put down also at the same time. And a uh, very steady play by Hazrobs, very cautious, doesn't want to go out in this tournament because even though, I mean, Hazrobs is very favoured, if Hazrobs loses this game, he is out of yep, the tournament as well. Yeah, he already got knocked down to the loser's bracket, so it's something you have to bear in mind. And Delphi has now got to be aware that expansion's up. You've seen the forge going down. Hazelops does this every single time. He knows what's coming up, and the response you can already see is on its way right now. Roach Warrant on the way, double evolution chamber coming up as well for him. That's looking pretty good, and economically, extremely strong. Unbelievable. I mean, you can see the comparison right now on the screen. Very visual, incredibly, incredibly in his favor right now. And what is esports without drama? And this drama has fueled, in my opinion, Delphi, because he is playing a lot more um, just strong in this game. Yeah, he's, he's got focused. all this economy out. He's so fucked. He's going to get this third up uh, very soon. He has such a great economy. Double Evo Chambers down here as well. And uh, this is looking pretty good for Delphi. Has jobs trying to get these rucks down, so possibly he could take a third soon as well. But like I said, Delphi looking pretty good so far in this matchup. Very solid style. Delphi slides past as well. Oh, yes, he gets in there. There we go. Scouting information a plenty for him. He gets a single Zergling past as the warp in comes on. And he's able to spot everything in the base. He knows exactly what his opponent's doing. And now he's going to be feeling really confident because Hazel is in no position to attack. Yeah, he has no structures that would throw him off, such as the Stargate. Doesn't see an early robotics facility. Just sees four gateways in total with the forge. And uh, wouldn't be surprised if he does go for a, uh, for a, a, robo, bit, a robo facility very shortly, especially against this heavy roach uh, composition, especially because he's been scouting with this Phoenix and sees all the upgrades being researched. He sees the roach warrant, doesn't see any hydrodens and so on. Uh, so he does need to bring in immortals into this composition. And uh, we do see the robotics facility being added on here in the main base of Hydroobs. Mm. Yeah, that's going to be messy. However, bear in mind that the economic advantage is still firmly, firmly in favor of Hazelobs. He's able to get a lot of good scouting information. He hasn't made his way into the main base really, but he knows what's there anyway. He went there with a previous run. Lair take now, almost complete now for Delphi. And uh, Ling's trying to pick off a stalk in the middle of the map. Not quite being able to get there as reinforcements do come in. A lot of resources being gathered up by Hazelobs. I'm not sure what this is, a mistake. But there is a lot of there's 700, 800, there's so That's much That's a lot. Money. I mean, you'd expect a mass warp in from that, and he does have an immortal coming in, but still, he is banking a lot of cash right now. I have to wonder if this is deliberate, but it's showing no sign of being. Yeah, I'm kind of questioning why this is uh, being done. We'll have to see. Uh, he doesn't quite have um, enough. Uh, no, actually, he does. He can warp in units from these warp oh, bits. Yeah. We'll have to see what he's doing. Here we do see units being added on, yeah, yeah. but he will want to look to try and get this third down to stop this influx of resources and uh, to spend this money is that's not good at all. Slowing down 87 food versus 130 and now plus two attack, um, range attack from Delphi has been researched. It's I wouldn't be surprised way. if we see the carapace as well. Very, very strong. Goody, oh not goody, cloud-like upgrades going on here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's going heavy in the upgrades and it's smart as well because Hazelobs does not favor the double forge approach. He doesn't. He does not upgrade as much as his opponents and that's something Delphi can take very good advantage of looking for it right now and we do see the layer tech is complete we're ready on that one upgrades are plenty on their way delphi being nice and patient waiting waiting for the right opportunity to strike and economically he's still a powerhouse right now his army size is looking really good his worker supply is looking really good and he has full map control right now i don't know if delphi was trolling everybody in that first game at the start of the second game because this is a different player right now oh yeah he has the timing of the spire down as the robotics bay is nearing complete and he's playing a lot solid here could even go and take a fourth base soon and he's just going to do a little bit of pressure onto the third expo or should be expo of Hazuobs. Try and slow it down, try to force a cancel out of it. But a counter attack, two 
different ways of attacking you. That is very smart, extremely smart right now, able to split that, and there's no force field play available at the base, no, no way. Focusing fire right now on the forge as much as he can, not able to do an immense amount of damage, however, in the meantime, he's also driven away there, and I don't know, I have to question that. Yeah, he didn't do enough damage at all, actually, to warrant that attack. I got a little bit excited about that. Uh, if he'd managed to uh, snipe the forge, that could have been extremely vital, especially with his upgrades powering away. And we do have a transition into Mutilus uh, with a Festation Pit being thrown down at the same time. And uh, I'm surprised he hasn't gone to throw down a fourth base yet, as he knows that Hasrobs is trying to take his third. Yep. Indeed. When you see a production tab that is this long, you know that a player is in the driving seat. And again, I do have to question that he was not able to snipe off the forge. That would have been nice. Would have been at least able to stop the upgrade on its way in. But it's not critical. He didn't lose a huge amount of units. He's certainly not in any kind of bad position right now. Spore crawlers coming up, spine crawlers coming up. He doesn't want any Dark Templar in the base, which is, of course, a great risk when you are involving Hazelwobs in anything. His army count still looking good, continuing to pump out units aplenty, although it's getting a little bit closer right now, simply because he lost so many units in the last encounter and wasn't really able to take anything out with it. And Hazelwobs, I love this person's style of his, walling off the third, so when he has one main entrance uh, to his base. Mutilus are coming down, though, on the third base. We'll be able to get it well. One a probe. probe. <laughs> well, <they laughs> he might even incoming. have taken another one. There you go. It's right into the line right Yeah, And there is no real defense right now. He's able to take one. He looks for a second right there. It's not going to happen. He needs to leave immediately. However, this is a perfect map for sort of going back and forth. A quick stalker weapon by Hazelobs, though. He had the resources for it. Got to get trapped right here. If he's not careful, a pincer. Oh, he's able to slide away only just. And he sees a Colossus coming out as well. That's valuable information. Another stalker warps in. He loses a mutilisk in the process. But once again, he sees so much. I really like his style, just going for a few mutilists here and uh, just picking off, you know, probes. Uh, and not only probes, he's getting the scouting information too. Oh, yeah. And uh, can easily switch over to corruptors, as we are seeing here. Uh, and investors have come out into play now. We're going to see some fungal growth for sure. Blink being researched, this is going to be extremely useful. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a hive coming up soon so we can go to this greater spire. As he's actually starting to research the plus one melee attack. <laughs> look how cool that just made me look because the hive just automatically goes down now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We've got the Prophet Apollo in the studio right here with us. Looking pretty damn good. Army supply is still very much in favor of Delphi right now. He is just streaming out everything possible. And Hazel Ops could be in a lot of trouble right here. Yeah, I'm looking at his upgrades. 1-1, one, one, I would have wished to see the Double Forge, actually. Very popular as of recent, and uh, it's not what we've seen here. So It's Hazelob's, not Hazelob's style, is yeah. it? He just doesn't do it. And right now, is streaming forward with a few units, wants to take Zelnaga Towers, get some scouting information. Delphi, very patient, because he knows he can be. He doesn't need to run in right now. He's still got the upgrade advantage. He still has the economic advantage. He is looking for that famous 300 supply push, and it looks like that's exactly what he's going to go for right now. He's mixing it up as well this time, and there are no High Templar in that force to deal with those investors. This could be brutal, especially with such a heavy stalk composition. There's the fungal growth. Rips through him. A lot of damage done right there. Delphi just trying to look for the position. A good snipe off there by, by Hazelobs, however, loses a couple of infestors in the process. Delphi looking for another fungal growth. He doesn't have the energy right now. There's the big snipes it off again. Delphi running backwards and unfortunately now he decides to fight after losing a bunch of units in the process. Where are his reinforcements? Yeah, not looking good at all. Hazelobs bulldozing down here and I'm not even sure if this is a good place to engage for Delphi. Oh no, force fields block him off right now. Immortals in the mix as well. There's the blink away from it. He might even lose his stack defenses. However, no observers as far as I can tell in that mix. There we go, tunneling claws and into the line he goes. What a pop up. And he takes all the sentries out very quickly. Bottling forward once again, tries to do a little bit more damage, focusing fire on the Immortal right here, takes one, looks to take the second one, it's looking alright for him, he needs to reinforce, and he does have reinforcements coming on the way, Delphi taking a lot of losses, however, Hazor is taking even more, Army Supply is still in favour of Delphi right now, he's not going to be able to hold this line, he needs to back off and bring in his reinforcements, get his Infester in the mix, he does have a Fungal Growth ready to go, can prove to be very advantageous, and that Colossus almost down, needs to get a snipe off on that, there's the Fungal Growth going in right here, good damage done, there's the Lockdown, 
Fine Crawler does continue damage, holds the line only just. It's still fairly equal in this encounter. Colossus is taken out. A single Hero Roach pops along behind it and snipes it off. Very nice play there. And Delphi pushing him back all the way back. And his economy still looking very good. And he's going to chase these down. He has the superior army count now. Blinking away is going to be the only option on a lot of Roaches. Very up, well upgraded. 2-2 two, two versus 2-1. Oh, in yeah. the background, we do have plus three being researched for Hazrobs. He's definitely going to need that. But now... Delphi has the breathing space, the opportunity to take this to the loser bracket final and not could take possibly the, the favorite out. Absolutely, could take the momentum right here. He loses a extracted, not a big deal really. Delphi is able to push those stalkers away once again. Immortals were sniped off at a great rate there and really the Immortals was what he needed to do the most damage. He didn't have the unit count and Delphi was able to use the tunneling claws to his advantage. Hazelob's caught out of position without an observer. He brought one in later on in the fight. That was a little bit too late. That single heroic roach snipes off a Colossus at the back that was doing horrendous damage and right now Delphi in the driving seat he has the momentum it's looking good for him he needs to prosecute this advantage 194 food versus 126 of Hazuobs plus three damage being done for uh, plus three being researched sorry for oh, yeah. Delphi as well as five corrupts and a greater spy being added on and we do see the Templar archives complete as well as storm being researched and the storm could possibly save Hazuobs in this location it could, but the question is, can Delphi get in there in time to do a real damage before that storm really comes into play? Economically, he's still ahead, although Hazelobs is starting out on more gateways. He's starting to get his production rolling. Delphi is a little bit gun-shy right now. I feel he is maxed out in terms of his army size, just about anyway. He's got more defenses coming down. He's looking to deliver that death blow by the looks of it. Here's the transfer right here. Did Delphi see it? He did. He saw the transfer. He's immediately going on to do some damage. And right now, the Stalker's following it up. He might take a couple of roaches. He's actually backing off right there. Sniped off. Well, he would have been if he hadn't borrowed so, so very quickly. That Observer will be forced to move in there. Still, he knows what his opponent's are doing. Delphi still has the upper hand economically. He, well, we can see exactly what he's trying to do right now. And if he is able to get that in there, he even kills a couple of his own roaches off to make sure he has the count for this. And if he's able to break through with this, this is going to be critical. Yeah, there are a lot of stalkers though, and plus three has finished, and plus three is a scary upgrade. Oh yeah. When uh, you face that against a Protoss player, and uh, now he's starting the plus two armor and zealot charge is going to be a great, great upgrade to help fight against this. And I wouldn't be surprised if Hazuob stayed on four base for a while, started to look for his fifth in around a few minutes' time. But we are now 24 minutes into this game, and so many. Um, Broodlord's out. It's going to be very hard to deal with this, especially with the Infestors using the Fungal Growth to hold them Blink Stalkers together. Yep. Bear in mind, though, he does have Templar on the field, and we've seen Hazel Ops. He can snipe those uh, Infestors off very quickly. He's very fast with it, and also an Observer has been hanging around there the entire time. He's been aware of exactly what's coming in, and Hazel Ops has kept an eye on things, and once again, we've seen that these Broodlords fail before, and Delphi's going to be very careful with his, with his positioning to make sure that doesn't happen. I don't think he has enough ground units now, all, to be honest, Total Biscuit. He has far too many Broodlords, I feel. A lot, and the uh, Stalkers could do a lot of damage here combined with the Immortal and the High Templar. And here they come. And will Delphi be able to fight? Oh, he's going to get caught out of position. That's not what he wants right now. Delphi needs on it. There's a Storm at the front. Roaches running into a second and a third and a fourth. It is nasty. It's not what you want. And there's the quick blink follow up right there. It looks like Delphi might be taking a lot of damage here. He really, really is. His army count is still in favor, however. He might be able to push this back. Here's the blink in the middle right here. Looks to take one. Tonight's off the Infestor once again. And Delphi's forces are getting torn apart. But Hazel was taking massive losses as well. However, the Broodlords are taken down, which is pretty damn critical. Roaches can drive them away. Significant losses for both. <laughs> but Delphi has the economy. He, he reinforced does. with a lot. We now have 23 Roaches out, 8 popping at the same time, and 150 food versus 120. And, and uh, Mulus harassment yeah. on the third, on the fourth base as well, doing a lot of damage here. Very nice, saving them from the early stages of this game. And wow, this game is so close. What a great oh, yeah. loser bracket semi-final. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Neither wants to go out right now, and I absolutely do not blame them. It is incredibly, incredibly well matched. We do have the Broodlords on the field once again. Haze Warp's employing the trademark tactic that he's done before. He pushes his opponent back, and then immediately, and I don't mean immediately, blinks in to do as much damage to those Broodlords as possible. We do see more coming on the field right now. Infester in the mix doesn't really have the energy to do anything, and the High Templar pushing forward to try and snipe that off again. 
There's not a lot of energy, so the feedback's not happening. And hey, free high Templar, nothing wrong with that. Delphi gets the snipe off on there. Needs to look for more upgrades. His army count is still looking pretty good. It's a little bit closer than I would like, but he should be able to go in here. He's got full upgrades. Delphi's on three and three. The army count of his opponent not looking amazing, and no plasma shield upgrade at all, of course. That's going to be a little bit messy. Delphi looking for positioning, and it looks like he's got it. This is a great place to put them, because of course you can't blink up there. It is impassable terrain. That is an ideal place to put them. Delphi backing off once again, doing sniping damage. He's using them as they should be. They're artillery pieces. That's what they are. Hazu can't get up there. That is an absolutely fantastic bit of positioning right here. And the thing is that Delphi doesn't actually have the economy anymore to reinforce this army. So I think this is his final army. His fourth his base isn't saturated. His fifth base isn't saturated. And Hazu Ops has the late game advantage right now. So if this army doesn't work well, the Observer comes up there now. Oh, wow. Takes one, takes two. Uh, Delphi caught out of position once again. You've got to bear in mind the range of those Brutalos looking pretty good. Is this the push that we've been waiting for? Fungal Growth is ready. Will it be sniped off? It probably will not. We're looking for it right here. It is sniped off. Fungal does not detonate right now. That is messy. Rotors right now into the line. They're getting absolutely devastated. Delphi getting torn apart right here. Hazelwobs is falling back just a little bit, but so many storms coming in. Army supply rapidly falling right now. Hazelwobs holds the line. He has what he needs to do this. Void Rays in the mix as well. Nothing to deal with them. Archons and nothing left of that army, I'm afraid. Grats, GG. GG calls. GG, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Hazelwobs holds it. It's so very close. What a great game from both players. And very unfortunate that Delphi was not able to prosecute that attack. But there you go. And we see Hazelwobs will advance into the loser bracket final yep. where he will face the loser of our next up and coming game. Cloud yep. versus Star Eagle. Yep. But unfortunately for Delphi, he just didn't have that late game economy. He's played so well on three, kind of four bases, but as soon as it went further than that, he couldn't pull out. And I just think that shows the signs of a stronger player from Hazyobs who could deal with the late game economy aside from Delphi. Yeah, I agree with that. And Delphi's economic play is so strong in sort of the mid game, but if he's unable to really push his advantage, then in the late game, he does have a tendency of falling behind. We saw that right there. He threw it in there. He wasn't able to deal with it. He kind of, I don't know, it felt like he sort of gave up because he was just sitting in those storms, taking huge amounts of damage from the roaches. Very unfortunate.